How good is ChatGPT? Can it code? Can it write a WordPress plugin? Can it give you accurate information when you need it? And is this the technology that'll dethrone Google when it comes to online search? Let's find out. All right, so over the past week and a half, there's been a lot of news about a brand new artificial intelligence program, and it's called ChatGPT. Now, within the first week, there's been over a million people to sign up to this platform. And for now, it's completely free of charge. All you need to do is set up an open AI account, and then you can start playing around with it. But in this video, I want to talk about what ChatGPT is and show you how it works. We're going to have it generate some text for us, and we're going to even have it generate code. Now, the question is, is this game changing technology or is it all hype? Let's find out. All right, so I'm over here on the openai.com website itself. And here you see some information about what ChatGPT is. It's optimizing language models for dialogue. Scroll in here. They've trained a model called ChatGPT, which interacts in a conversational way. The dialogue format makes it possible for ChatGPT to answer follow-up questions. It admits its mistakes, challenge incorrect premises, and reject inappropriate requests. ChatGPT is a sibling model to instruct GPT which is trained to follow an instruction in a prompt and provide a detailed response. All right, so let's see how this actually works. So I'm already logged in over here. I have my free account set up and this is the basic screen. So you see some examples over here. One example is explain quantum computing in simple terms. Let's see how that works. I'm going to copy that. I'm going to paste it into the prompt area here and it generates text. Now let's see the answer. Let's see if it's something that makes sense. Quantum computing is a type of computing that uses quantum mechanics to perform operations on data. In classical computing, data is represented using bits, which can have a value of either zero or one. In quantum computing, data is represented using quantum bits or qubits, which can have a value of zero, one, or both at the same time. This property known as superposition allows quantum computers to perform certain operations much faster than classical computers. All right, that seems like a pretty good answer right there. But now what else can this do? All right, so let me have it write a rap song about programming and see what it produces. All right, so you see it's working over here. It's pretty fast. All right, so it's done processing and it gave me a song, a short song about programming. And this is the interesting part because you have creative works like artwork or songs or poems and even code being written by artificial intelligence. And that has a lot of people questioning what does that mean for all of us. Now, I've been covering this topic for the past couple of weeks, talking about artificial intelligence, where we currently are, and how much longer before AI reaches parity with us. But this is pretty good right here. Now, let's take a look at this song real quick. Now, don't worry, I'm not going to start rapping over here or singing or hurting your eardrums with my lack of talent. But I'll just say it like spoken word. I'm a programmer. I code all day. I make the computer do things my way. Now, me saying that, me trying to make that actually work, yeah, I'm not a performer. But if you put that in somebody else's hands like Drake or Eminem or someone who actually knows how to sing, they could probably make that sound good. It goes on to say, it's all about the code. It's where I excel. I can create anything. Just give me a spell. I'm a master of the keyboard. I know every key. I'm a programmer. This is my destiny. It goes on. I'm not going to bore you with the rest of it. All right, let's see what else this can do. Let's see how to become a better programmer. As you see, it's putting out the information now. It says to become a better programmer, there are several things you can do. Now, looking over this real quickly, a lot of this information I've actually mentioned in the past. Practice, practice, practice. The more you code, the better you will become. Learn from other programmers, stay up to date with the latest technologies and the best practices, take on challenging projects, collaborate with others, and be willing to ask for help and advice. But can this AI code? Let's find out. Let's see, I'm gonna type out here, write a function to echo hello world in PHP. All right, so I'm basically just saying write a function to echo hello world in PHP because that's one of the first programs and one of the first things you do when you're learning how to code. Echo hello world. Let's see what it gives us. 
All right, so it generated pretty quickly. It says, here's a simple PHP function that will output hello world. It gave it the name echo hello world in camel case. And inside of it, we have our echo hello world statement that'll be printed to the screen. And we see down here, the call to the function itself. All right, so that's pretty basic, but it shows that it can actually write some simple code. All right, so let's give it something a little bit more difficult. Write a WordPress form plugin. Let's see what it does here. All right, so it's giving out some basic information. It has the information up in the comment area of what's required for a plugin, and it's generating the code. Function contact form short code. Let's take a look at this. This is a single file plugin. All right, so we have function contact form short code is using the ob start over here. We have our form, we have our label, our input for name, type text, that seems correct. Our label for email, label for the message, for the text area, and the input type submit. It's returning ob get clean, add short code, contact form. Will this actually work? All right, so let's see. Let's copy the code here. I'm gonna start up MAMP. All right, so I'm logging into my developer environment. Let me open up VS Code. I'm gonna open up a folder here. All right, so I open up my terminal. I'm gonna change directories into the plugin folder. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna create a new file and I'm gonna call it chatgptform.php. All right, let me go over here, grab that again, paste it right there. All right, so now we have it here. Let's go back to the browser. Let's go to the plugins area. This is it right here, contact form. Let's activate that. And now we have to use this short code to see if it works. I'm gonna put the classic editor on for now. All right, so I'm gonna do a post. Let's preview it. And it looks like we have a very basic form. That's not bad. All right, so I'm gonna stop this here. I'll just save the draft so I can play around with that later. All right, so let me see, what else can we do? Let me have it write an HTML template file. This thing's working like magic. I mean, it's actually pretty decent. We have the doc type set up. We have the HTML tags, the head tags, the meta. We have the title. Everything seems to be properly formatted there. That's not bad. Let's see if we could do an algorithm. All right, so let's see what it does. All right, so it's starting off pretty good. We create our function bubble sort, giving it a parameter of array. We're counting what's in the array and saving that value in the end variable. What I like about this is that it gives comments also. It gives comments on what the code is actually doing at certain points. So here it says loop through the array swapping adjacent elements that are out of order until the array is sorted. So you see we have nested for loops over here. We have an if conditional, and then we're returning it right here. Let's see if this works. Let's copy that, paste it there. Let's save this to just the htdocs folder and save it. Let's copy the call to the function here. And then let's use a uh, print underscore r, let's save this. Let's go back to the terminal. And that worked. We see that it took this group of numbers here, this array, it's out of order, but then after running it through the bubble sort algorithm over here, it put them in order over here. That's not bad. What else can this thing do? All right, so for the past week and a half, people have been asking the ChatGPT app different types of questions, either for research, for education, or just to help quench their curiosity. But now another question comes up. Is this the future of search? And should Google be concerned? And here's why. Because right now, when you want to get an answer to a problem, when you want to research something, you Google it. Then you get a whole bunch of results, and you got to filter out those results to see which one is going to give you the answer you're looking for. And that means you probably have to go from article to article to article. Now, Google does a good job trying to make sure that what's on page one are sources that's going to answer your question properly. Sometimes it gets it right, sometimes it doesn't. But with something like this, you can put in just a simple prompt and get some feedback and get an answer. Let me try something else.
That's pretty cool. You can pretty much ask it just about anything and it will give you a decent answer. Now the developers and the team behind this have mentioned the fact that it doesn't always get it right and sometimes it could actually convince you, even though it's wrong, that it's right. In a way, it kind of learning how to make things up as it goes along. And that's probably why right now it's still in the research phase, which means people have free access to use it. So yeah, so something like this, I could definitely see being a game changer to how we do search online. I mean, if you're old enough, you probably remember Internet Explorer. You probably remember AOL, maybe Netscape. Google came around and they upended the entire search industry. But a tool like ChatGPT can probably upend the industry again. But I'm pretty sure at this point, the developers over at Google, they probably have a few tricks up their sleeves. But this is pretty exciting. I mean, the potential here is phenomenal. If it gets better at coding, if it gets better at generating text, and it's done a really good job so far. It even created a rap song about programming, which is honestly pretty cool. Granted, I'm not a rapper, so I'm not going to try to sing that, but you know, it's pretty nice. But if you put that into the hands of somebody who actually knows how to do it in terms of performing and singing and stuff like that, that could be pretty cool. All right, so you could also check out the facts section. Question is, how much does it cost to use ChatGPT? Right now it's for free. How does ChatGPT work? ChatGPT is fine-tuned from GPT 3.5. Now GPT 3 was very powerful and GPT 3.5 seems like it's even more powerful. The exciting thing is though that GPT 4 is right around the corner. All right, so why does the AI seem so real and lifelike? Gives you an explanation about that. Can you trust that the AI is telling you the truth? They acknowledge some of the limitations and some of the incorrect answers it can give. So this is definitely a good page to check out. But ChatGPT is an awesome project coming out of OpenAI. And they actually do have other projects that are very similar, but used for different purposes. Like if you go back to their main website, scroll all the way down, you're gonna see this section here. They have the Dolly 2. That one is to generate artwork. You give it a prompt and it'll create an image for you. That's pretty cool. They have a lot of projects going on there. So definitely check it out. Go to openai.com, sign up for your free account, and then start playing around with ChatGPT. So what's your thoughts and opinions on this? Do you believe that ChatGPT is advanced enough now to really be a useful tool? In my opinion, I think it has a lot of promise. It's obviously still within the early phases. There's still a lot of research that has to go into it, a lot of training for the model. But honestly, I think that if you're anyone in the creative world, if you're looking to create an article or blog post or even a coder and you want to get some very basic starter content or starter code, this can be helpful. Granted, you have to double check everything, but if you have writer's block or if you have coder's block, a tool like this might give you the jumpstart you need. All right, so hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe, hit that notification icon. If you have any thoughts or comments, leave them down below. And as always, thanks for watching and happy coding.